Now you can see how it's possible to eat so much sugar without being aware of it. But you're wondering how it can hurt you. Let's see what happens when you eat an average sized serving of chocolate cake with icing. It's your teeth that first come in contact with sugary foods. Tooth decay is so widespread that it affects virtually every person in the United States and costs us more than two billion dollars per year in dental bills. We do know that diet, particularly sugar in the diet, influences the sort of organisms that can colonize and grow on the tooth surfaces. We all have some of these caries producing organisms. One organism which has been very carefully studied is Streptococcus mutans. But the numbers of these organisms that we find varies considerably and people who have a high sugar diet have many more Streptococcus mutans on their tooth surfaces growing in colonies which we call dental plaque. Dental cavities begin in childhood and by the age of six more than 70% of our kids have at least one decayed tooth. It may come as a surprise to parents, but the multiple cavities suffered by our kids can be reduced. There's a, another study which was conducted in Australia in a uh, orphanage where the children had a sugar restricted diet. And in that study, there was also a very striking difference between those children who had very, very little sugar in their diet and the children in the public schools who were used for comparison. It was a tenfold difference. When that piece of chocolate cake reaches the small intestine, the sugar content of the cake passes quickly through the intestinal walls to flood the bloodstream. This causes a rapid and dramatic rise in the body's blood glucose level. Glucose is blood sugar. It is the energy source for each cell in our body. Every time we move, our muscles burn glucose to fuel the movement, and our brain needs glucose for all its activities. The key to its all working correctly in a healthy body is a constant and even amount of glucose circulating in the bloodstream. Amazingly, this amount is only about two teaspoons. That piece of chocolate cake contains 10 teaspoons of sugar, much too much for the bloodstream to absorb and use. Insulin, which controls the amount of glucose in the blood, is secreted from the pancreas. In the attempt to regulate the excessive amount of sugar contained in the cake, more insulin is issued. The insulin does the job, frequently too well. The blood glucose level drops back to normal, and then it continues to drop until too much glucose is removed from the bloodstream, which means not enough glucose or body fuel will be available for our muscles, tissues, vital organs, or brain, all the places that depend on a constant, even supply of glucose for smooth operation. Eating more sugary foods in the long run only further lowers the blood glucose level. Not only does that piece of chocolate cake disrupt your normally even blood glucose level and leave you hungry, it also adds about 200 calories to your waistline. Sugar makes a larger contribution to our diet measured in calories than does bread, meat, or any other single food item. But sugar is often referred to as an empty calorie or naked calorie food. What this means is that all the nutrients, all the vitamins, minerals, essential acids and fibers have been processed out of the sugar cane or sugar beet. So all refined sugar can give us is calories and nothing else. Currently, Americans get anywhere from 15 to 25 percent of their daily caloric intake from sugar. That's about 400 to 700 calories a day. And if you get too many calories from sugar, you're probably not eating enough of the nutritious foods your body needs. And the other foods are better for you than the sucrose. Uh, they contain vitamins and minerals and other important nutrients that the sucrose does not contain. Not only does sugar come from the processing plants without nutrients, but once we ingest it, sugar depletes the nutrients stored in our bodies. Here's how it works. 
For the body to digest and utilize any food requires an expenditure of vitamins and minerals. Normally, the nutrients that the body spends are paid back by the nutrients contained in the food we eat. This is not true for processed sugar, which doesn't have any nutrients. So the body is depleted of precious vitamins and minerals like calcium, phosphorus, chromium, magnesium, and the B vitamins whenever we eat sugary foods. Ancient Oriental civilizations believed that all mental and physical illnesses were caused by the food they ate. The Romans said, es quod es, which means you are what you eat. Easy enough for the Romans to say because none of their foods were processed. But today, if you satisfy your palate and your hunger, you're no longer guaranteed of satisfying your nutritional needs. I have reached the conclusion after studying the evidence and uh, gathering some information in our own laboratories that uh, nutrition is really the, cure, the key to good health. It isn't only the substances that we uh, ingest uh, that uh, determines the state of our health. That is, it isn't that uh, we need to ingest more of uh, certain substances in order to be really healthy. We also have to be careful not to ingest too much of certain substances. And of course, uh, sugar is a prime example. If nutrition is the key to good health, Americans have probably misplaced it. Healthcare expenditures in the United States in the 1980s will exceed $230 billion per year. That's more than $1,000 for each man, woman, and child. Of course, we know about the involvement of sugar with diabetes, but uh, there is also evidence uh, that the incidence of infectious disease is less in people who have a lower intake of sugar than in those who have a higher intake of sugar. I think it is likely that sugar is also involved in the immune mechanisms too, so that uh, people who have a high intake of sugar do not have such effective natural protection against the vectors of disease. Less well known, allergies. Uh, people who run around either with a classical allergy of congestion or a cerebral allergy characterized by irritability, difficulty concentrating, sleep and appetite disturbances. Uh, these things, too, are caused by uh, the many substances foisted upon us in our food. I could feel my joints were in a lot of pain. I felt like I had arthritis all over my body. My my whole face and my body would swell. It's just like if I had taken a shot of penicillin. I'm allergic to penicillin. That's just, I had the same reaction if I had eaten sugar. Studies and clinical reports have linked the overconsumption of sugar to the following. Anemia, especially in teenagers. Kidney lesions and fat deposits in the kidney. Hypertension or high blood pressure. Arteriosclerosis, the thickening and hardening of the walls of the arteries. Duodenal ulcers. Asthma. The common cold, obesity, gout, gallstones, inflamed gallbladder, allergies, tooth decay, pyorrhea, infectious diseases, indigestion, hypoglycemia, which is a condition of low blood glucose, dermatitis, heart disease, and diabetes, which in itself can cause blindness. For the majority of Americans, sugar is probably tolerable in small or moderate doses, one or two ounces a day. But for the 15 million carbohydrate-sensitive adults in the United States, even a small amount of sugar can lead to a serious health risk. Dr. Sheldon Reiser has studied the effect sugar has on these people. There's something wrong with their ability to metabolize dietary carbohydrates. And these represent anywhere from 9 to 16 percent of the adult population. There's about a three times greater tendency to be carbohydrate sensitive in men than in women. And we found that the sucrose had a much greater effect on triglycerides and especially insulin and insulin response than in the people we consider to be potentially carbohydrate sensitive than in the normal people. Now apparently these people that have this genetic uh, background are people that uh, have an overactive pancreas. 